Hey everybody, this is Flying Ryan here, and I just wanted to tell you about my recent trip to Utah. So despite my cat's stern protesting, I recently flew out to Utah for the unveiling of a new quadcopter by the name of Teal. A couple weeks ago, I received a message from a 18-year-old entrepreneur and RC pilot by the name of George Matus, and he invited me out to Utah for the unveiling of his new quadcopter and company, and uh, you know, it was my first time being invited to be flown somewhere because of my RC channel, so I was really excited, and I took him up on the offer, did a little bit of research about him. He actually recently won a, a Theo Fellowship, so he's taken a couple of years off of college to you know, build up this quadcopter and his company, and he's actually also recently been on the BattleBots TV show, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, his... Uh, Teal quadcopter is being, you know, the tagline is that it's the world's fastest quadcopter out of the box. Uh, can fly about 70 miles per hour. Uh, but that's not just it. It also has a built-in supercomputer. So it can just do, you know, unlimited things uh, via smartphone apps. You know, you can do like a follow me mode where it actually uses image recognition. Uh, which could, you know, also be used for like recovery and rescue missions. Um, it also can do like a virtual uh, flight course, so you could like draw obstacles in a virtual world and, you know, kind of compete with people on the course even though it's not actually there in the real world. So I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, and it's all modular. The arms come off easily for, you know, replacing them or uh, travel purposes. And the top of the body comes off, which allows for different... A hardware combination so you could put like an FPV top on it or there's one with a, a prop guard which are the two versions he showed us but you know the future is open with the app development and the top part you know what people come up with for this thing is really to be found out so he's he's basically created a platform for designers and developers to work with so who knows what we may see from this in the future uh, but right off the bat, it's, you know, very impressive quad, looks great, super fast and stable, uh, so really nice. So we'll get into the trip here. Uh, once I landed in Utah, we actually went out for a nice lunch where I met George and his crew there in the center of the pick and a couple other RC uh, YouTube channels. On the right there, we've got Dustin Dunhill. On the left is JRE Show, and behind him is High Tech Dad. Uh, and after our lunch, we went out to the flying field, which was just absolutely gorgeous surroundings, you know, ski hills, mountains, water all around us. Beautiful day, beautiful area, and I was so happy to be there. So let's hear George tell us all about it. So these are three teals uh, with different configurations. This is sort of the standard package that comes out of the box. Uh, gets the user flying and has a 4K camera integrated, fully electronically stabilized, the supercomputer built in. And then it's fully upgradable with, with these configurations, for example. So we've got the prop guards, the FPV cover. Uh, the idea behind this was to make it as expandable as possible so that users can tune it to their flight style or, or the use case that they want to fly it for. So instead of just being a flying camera, we can also play games with it, we can race with it, you can toss it up in the air, have it follow you around. And then developers can actually start to build apps around this. And we can build an app store of use cases and, and uh, uh, you know, see what's possible in this space. It has over a teraflop of GPU performance, um, so like, you know, more powerful than most PCs or notebooks. Um, perfect for, uh, you know, image recognition, artificial intelligence, machine learning, autonomous flight. Um, so this was an NVIDIA, NVIDIA collaboration? It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I worked with NVIDIA to integrate this, and, and that's sort of the, the brain of this platform. On the hardware side, it's fully modular, the arms plug in and out, the battery snaps in on the bottom. The top cover also comes off really easily, so you can switch it out with uh, different kinds that, that let you mount FPV equipment, prop guards, uh, any sort of equipment. And then on the inside, we have the, the necessary connections and peripherals to be able to connect different types of sensors and modules, and, and then program it to do what you want. And what are some of those sensors? So out of the box, we have the, the camera. Obviously, that gives us uh, 4K video, 13 megapixel stills. Gives us image recognition capability. We have that supercomputer integrated, and then the inertial navigation system, which has a GPS receiver, magnetometer, barometer, gyro, and accelerometer. It combines all the data coming in from those sensors and uh, channels it through one stream, so it gives you a lot better flight accuracy and estimations. Also gives us differential and RTK GPS capability, so we can get up to about uh, or get to about a couple centimeter accuracy with GPS instead of you know big six foot range. 
Um, and then expandable sensors could be thermal imaging, optical avoidance systems, anything that, that you know, can run basically over USB or I2C, UR, SPI, uh, anything that, that uh, you know, a computer can run. If you wanted this to be the one drone for your life, so instead of just being a flying camera, it, it, you know, it can do so much more than that and, and suit a wide variety of people. So instead of you know, just, just one type of market, we're going after the consumer who's never flown before, they don't know about this technology. Uh, you know, they, they don't really know what's capable with this yet, but, but we want to make it as easy as, and as accessible as possible for them. So we have these beginner modes that, that let them, you know, start flying really easily and, and make it extremely safe. Uh, and then moving up all the way from the consumer to the hobbyist and the racer who want to push their technology further, uh, you know, push the boundaries of, of what they're doing currently, you know, race, uh, play games with it, and then developers want to start building apps around this with their SDKs to start building out this, this critical mass of software and, and applications. So instead of just being a drone for, for one specific application, we can be a, a multi-use uh, aerial platform. And we've got direct plugins for the FPV equipment and the, the RC receivers. Um, and so out of the box, you know, we'll be launching with three of our own applications. Uh, our company will be. The first is a command and control that, that lets users start flying. It has waypoint navigation, geofencing, all the basics to, to start flying and, and see what's capable with this, this platform. It has uh, a beginner mode where users can hit takeoff the, the quadcopter will go up about 20 feet, generate a virtual bubble around itself so that uh, you can learn your controls and orientation without it flying away and crashing. Um, and once you get good enough, you can just disable that and start flying like normal. How uh, fast does it go in that beginner mode? Uh, it's, it's a programmable setting. You can, you can adjust how fast you want it to go anywhere from just a couple miles an hour to up to 15, 20. And then the second app that we're working on is Follow Me Mode, where you just toss this up in the air and have it follow them around based on image recognition. It's done real time on the super, super computer. Um, and so that gives just rock solid performance, whether it's following you or your bike or car. And then the third app that we're building is a racing and gaming mode where users can log their flights and telemetry, be able to compete against other people virtually online, and also augment, also integrate some augmented reality where you can actually fly through obstacles and, and feel like you're going through a race course even though you're just in a parking lot in your field. Um, and then we'll be you know, offering those SDKs, like I mentioned, start building out other apps for the platform that just work through your smartphone. Um, We've been we've already been going to hackathons and different events, seeing what what you know developers are interested in doing with this, and they, they go all the way from you know mind control with EEG headsets to analy analyzing their baseball bat swing to playing hide and seek, you know anything that you can imagine is is programmable with this, um, and then you know even though we're gearing this towards the consumer market uh, for consumers, hobbyists, racers, and developers, we also want to start you know exploring the commercial market and seeing what's possible with search and rescue, agriculture monitoring. With uh, the machine learning capability, with the supercomputer, we're actually you know, able to do things like with search and rescue, you can send out a swarm of these, how to identify a person, learn what a person looks like versus a rock or a tree, and then be able to autonomously identify them. Uh, you know, things like that that, that make it um, you know, just so much more capable than, than other aerial platforms out there today. So we're manufacturing here in the States. We're doing our PCB, our, our assembly and our packaging in, in the Rockies and then doing our plastic injection molding in Texas. And so we're using a carbon infused plastic, which is closer to the strength to weight ratio of, of carbon fiber, uh, but it's plastic so we can mold it, streamline it, uh, make it aerodynamic, but it still has that durability where you, know, you can have a brick wall impact and, and you know, this won't break. But if it does, for whatever reason, then the arms are modular, you can plug them in and out, replace them really quickly, within a couple seconds really, and get back in the air. So we have a, a 4K camera integrated, it takes 13 megapixel stills. We have a 160 degree field of view and then we crop out a subset of that image uh, and stabilize it on three axes. So we get really good uh, video capability, still, uh, you know, still capability, and then uh, you also integrate that image recognition that, that lets you follow around different uh, objects and, and be able to identify different things as well. We have it built so that you know, we can come out with different versions later on that just plug in, uh, plug and play upgrades and replacements. And, and, uh, yeah, that, that was one of the goals of this product, is to make everything versatile and, and upgradable and modifiable instead of having this just be a lockdown product that's 100% you know, proprietary. So out of the box, we include two high-performance batteries that get you up to 70 miles an hour, 40 mile an hour wind resistance, and those give about 10 minutes of flight time. And then we also include a, a free endurance package for those first 500 signature series uh, models that, that we're offering, and, and that endurance package gets you up to about 20 minutes. Both batteries are for us. Uh, the high endurance battery is about double the capacity, slightly lower discharge rate, higher energy density, which, which gives you the, the longer flight times. And then the high performance 
batteries is just a really high discharge rate, which is great for racing and, and uh, uh, you know, speed. So we'll also be offering these through our site where users can just plug their smartphone in and be able to control this over Wi-Fi still, but still you know, get that tactile feedback of an analog controller. Oh, wow, that's uh, really cool. Be able to get you know, really good uh, accuracy and precision while, while having the, the advantage of digital video streaming and, and augmented reality and image recognition and all those capabilities. So does that come with the actual ready-to-fly package? This we're offering is an upgrade. Okay. Uh, so out of the box, all you need is a smartphone to fly, but then you can also use these types of gaming controllers. You can use 2.4 transmitters that, that hobbyists already have. FEV equipment is fully compatible with these as well. Um, so we wanted to, to not restrict the user to one specific setup, but keep it as open as possible to them. So there we have it. That's my look at Teal, and they will be sending me one for review, and it ships later this year, so stay tuned for that. Uh, you can go check it out at tealdrones.com. They've got all the information there. Uh, the first 500 pre-orders get a special signature series, so uh, that's a nice package, and you can get it for about $1,300, so go check it out. All right, talk to you next time. Oh!